Okay, thank you. I'm going to call the meeting to order and start with the usual. Say good evening to everyone. I'm Nina Perlmutter, Vice Chair of the Kenny Bunkport Planning Board. This is a virtual board planning board meeting. We're using Zoom conferencing format. The agenda on the town's website has the information needed for the public to participate by Zoom conferencing format or telephone. If you wish to participate through Zoom, you can join this webinar by the ID 920-4640-9044. You can also dial in by phone on at, or at 929-205-6099. You will be asked to enter the meeting ID number 920-4640. 9044 followed by the pound sign. If you are conferencing in by phone or through Zoom and watching this on cable or YouTube, you must turn down the volume or you will have feedback. We will all have feedback actually. As always, you can watch us on television on channel 1301 or stream us on YouTube at Kenny Bunkport Television. During the meeting, only planning board and current participates participants as selected by the board will be on the screen with audio connected. All other participants will be blacked out and audio muted except when the board solicits public input. If a public hearing is on the agenda for a particular topic, as uh, I think the first item is tonight, the applicant and board members will have discussions after which I will open the public hearing. At that time, anyone who wishes to be heard should raise your hand, the little yellow hand in Zoom, and we will recognize those people in turn. If you happen to be using your telephone to connect, raise your hand is star six and toggle mute is star nine. All right, I'm going to start by taking attendance and I cannot see all the participants on my phone here. So I'm going to ask you to sort of identify yourself. Um, I'm Nina Perlmutter. Uh, Ed, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Larry? I'm here, yep. Yeah. Okay, um, who else do I want in there? John. Uh, John, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. Um, is Scott here? No, not yet. No. Not yet, okay. Uh, anyone else? No, we're missing no. George and George. Yeah, we're missing George and Scott. Okay. 
Yeah, we, knew, uh, we received an email earlier today that uh, that George wasn't going to be present. Okay. okay. Thank you. Well, with John, with you participating, we'll have a quorum. So. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, next, I'd like to do approval of the minutes. Has any everybody gotten the minutes and had a chance to read them? Yes. Oh, Scott looks Scott looks like Scott just is joining us. Yes, oh. the minutes look good. I, I would move to approve them as uh, written. Um, I, I second that. I, I thought they were really clear. Yep. Okay, then I'll ask for all in favor. I'm in favor. Ed, are you in favor? Yes. Larry? In favor. Scott? Scott, are you muted? Not anymore. In favor. Okay. John? In favor. Okay. I think that takes care of everybody. So those are, those are approved. Um, we have two items on the agenda today. The first one is 210702, Joseph A. Rizzo, uh, preliminary site plan review, and this is a public hearing. Um, our second agenda item for people listening in is Bo Spirit, Kenny Bunkport, which is a final subdivision application. If you've tuned in and are interested in um, what's our other agenda item that we moved, um, the Ocean Woods Hotel, that has been moved until the next planning board meeting. So you don't have to stay on for that. Okay, um, I'd like to bring forward um, the applicant in on uh, Joseph A. Rizzo, preliminary site plan review. Can we do that? Yes, just yes. one moment. And I think Mr. Rizzo is handling this himself. Hi there. Hello. Okay. So we have you on board. Can you uh, give us a description of this plan and uh, what you plan to do? Yep. So this plan is in regards to an extension and improvement of an existing right of way. Uh, and then to split off a approximately 1.6 acre lot out of the 26 acre lot that I have. And it's an extension of a private road? Uh, right of way. It's, a, it's currently a Campbell Lane, which is a private road, yes. Yes, okay. Um, can we get the plan forward? Oh, I'm going to pull that, I'm gonna have to pull that up. I didn't realize we were going to go through that again. Hold on. Uh, Warner, is it possible you can pull it up? Uh, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Well, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to take us just right down to the plan. And th this is off Beachwood Avenue. Correct. Yes. So, uh, so Joe, I'll just go through the, you know, the plan pages that we have here since at the last meeting, uh, you know, the, the application was deemed complete, so we won't go through all the other pieces. And then if you just want to, you know, give a, you know, give a little bit of a dialogue as we go through the pages, just let me know whenever you want me to move on to the next one. Okay. Uh, so this is just the uh, boundary and wetland delineation survey. So I'll move on to the next one. Uh, this is the survey of the lot, which is directly adjacent to Beechwood, which has the right of way that grants me access to my land, uh, which is directly behind it. Okay. 
And then this is the plan showing the upgrade for the current right of way uh, to meet town standards. And then the extension over a wetland area, which is the darker area there. And then an addition of a hammerhead once upon my land to allow for a fire truck turnaround. And then uh, directly above that, you'll see where I'm demarcating the lot that I'd like to split off. And then here are just additional details uh, for what the new road would consist of. Okay. Again, more details. So you were planning in filling in wetland areas to establish this road? That is correct, and it is under 4,000 square feet. Uh, and we are only going to be required to notify the Army Corps of Engineers. And we have had Lucian from DEP come out and do a walkabout with us uh, and determine that we are not required for a tier one and that there is no connection to a wetland of significance, which is uh, in the back of the land. <clears throat> okay. I have only one question on this, Warner. Okay. We, we, John emailed you an article about um, the rescission of Trump's regulations on filling of wetlands and streams, intermittent streams, and so forth. Will this affect this in any way? Do you think? No, I don't. I, I don't see that you know that any of those decisions you know affect this you know in any particular fashion. Uh, you know, as you all know, it, the state or the the Army Corps essentially is delegated you know to the DEP you know jurisdiction and review over you know really the majority of what we see are minor wetland impacts uh, in those areas. So you know. Uh, and we've been, you know, the state's been still following all of those thresholds, uh, you know, that have been in place, you know, uh, separately under state law. Uh, and so this project isn't affected by, you know, by any of those changes. As I understand it, it's primarily, you know, one of the primary changes that occurred uh, under the Trump administration was defining, you know, how you dealt with waters of the United States. Uh, you know, was one of the, you know, the bigger kind of points of, of contention. It didn't change the fact that, you know, states uh, still carry jurisdiction, uh, you know, over wetland impacts, you know, which has remained in place in the state of Maine. Okay. So are we still waiting for an Army Corps of Engineers approval on this? Or will this come with a, a final plan? Yeah, we don't need an Army Corps of Engineer approval. We just need to notify them once we begin the work. As far as I can tell, uh, Jason from ARC Consultants, uh, you'll see in the end of this uh, application, there's a memo from him outlining that procedure. Okay. Yeah, yeah again, it falls you know under that 4,300 exempt, uh, but because of the core on some of these items, you know, what's been unclear in a lot of, you know, in, in a number of different circumstances is really who, you know, who has jurisdiction over what. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what Mr. Rizzo is doing, you know, is, is appropriate in the sense that, you know, the core gets notified. It's an exempt, you know, it's exempt because it's uh, freshwater forested under 4,300 from a specific DEP permit. Uh, but the core in these circumstances does get, you know, does get notified and, you know, has an allowance, you know, for comment, but it's, you know, these types of impacts, I don't, I don't expect us to, to see anything other than uh, an acknowledgement come back from the core. Okay, good. Okay, well, that was the only question that I had. Um, do other members of the board want to ask questions? Nina, just a clarification. You, you just mentioned something about the final uh, site plan. I, I thought this was the first and only. I know it says preliminary in its title, but yeah, I think a follow up. No, I think it is. I think um, I was thinking subdivision, but this is not a subdivision application. Right. I think that we would be giving final approval here, if I remember correctly. That's correct. 
Okay, good. Okay. And so can I just ask one, one more question? You, you last time you, Joseph, you, you went over the, uh, the draft of a, of an agreement that potentially would be, um, the, the start a draft of something you would you would uh, use for road maintenance between yourself and and the abutter whose land uh, ha has the right of way on it. Do, do you have anything that shows that, that that abutter is on board with this going on at all? I do not have anything written. Uh, they were present for the last meeting, oh, okay. uh, and I had and I had a meeting with them prior to that meeting where they gave me a verbal approval. Uh, and basically, they just wanted to come up with something a bit more informal, but I said, hey, this is a framework which I think we should subscribe to. That way the town has a document to reference in the future. So I, I, it seems like everything is amicable between uh, the neighbors, and we just got to sit down and have a meeting and, and okay. hammer it out. <clears throat> Thank you. That's all I had. Okay. Larry? Well, yep. Uh, I just had a couple of questions. So, um, so what's the total length? of the extension? I believe, uh, well, the entire road, I believe, is between 400 and 500 feet. Okay. And the extension is uh, about half of that. Okay. So there's no, you don't need any like fire hydrants or any of that kind of stuff out there? Correct. Okay. So, and then my second question, thank you for that. And then uh, land retained for future use. I mean, that's a little vague. Is that uh, uh, any ideas what that future use might be? So that that land back there, a good chunk of it is wetland, almost half of it. Hmm. And then the rest of it has a stream running through it and a bunch of finger wetlands. So okay. tough to say if we'd be able to do anything back there or not. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this, is all, this is all pretty wet back and through here. Um, um, you know, if you're familiar, this is the town, you know, this is the town where the town highway department is located. You know, and well, in this location here is where the old uh, town dump is located. Okay. You know, so this is all here relative. This is all pretty wet. Um, I mean, you've got a couple of different upland pockets here and there, but um, you know, not not very easy easy to get to. Uh, so, based on yeah. what we've seen, you know, in discussions that we've had with Jim Logan on this piece, is that your developable area is really here and, and in this area here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And Tyler, Tyler Brook cuts through there uh, and basically divides the whole thing in half. All right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so th does that imply that uh, at some point in the future, you're going to come back with uh, some plan of development for, well, a portion of it that would delineate, delineate all those things a bit more clearly than, than on this drawing C-100? Potentially, yeah. I mean, if if I'm fortunate enough to have the resources to do that, I may look at that. But it's it's a hard push. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then I was just looking at the DEP letter at the back here, and it said something about um, a vernal pool. So what's the judge? It says if the vernal pool is is assumed to be significant, the wetlands to be crossed will be wetlands of significance. So um, do we need to be aware of anything on that? Uh, I, I don't believe so because we walked with Lucian and uh, the area where the road is uh, being extended is was deemed not connected to the wetland of significance uh, and is not in a vernal pool. Uh, it's an extension of an existing corduroy, uh, which sometimes gets some water overflowing from adjacent uh, wetland uh, forest, forest, excuse me, forested wetland. <clears throat> Okay, so for purposes of this application, the existence of the wetland is, is kind of immaterial. So it sounds like. Correct. There are vernal pools back on the land as we move forward in development that we'll have to look at as we move forward. Okay, all right, thank you. That's it. All right. Scott, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay. John, what about you? Got mine. I'm no more. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions, I'll open up the public hearing. And anybody that's out there that wants to ask questions or speak, uh, go ahead and raise your hand, your Zoom hand.
None at all? Okay. All right, if that's the case, then I'll close the public hearing. And uh, I think we could deem this application ready to be voted on if somebody makes a motion. So I move to accept the uh, uh, application as complete. And to approve it? And to approve it, yes. Okay, and I'll second that motion. Uh, any discussion? No. All right, then. Uh, we'll take a vote. Um, I vote approved. Uh, Ed? Yes, I, I agree. Okay. Larry? Approve. Uh, Scott? Approve. Okay. John? Approve. Okay. Then the application is approved. And uh, who's the case manager on this one? Um, George. George. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll expect a finding of fact, then I'll email George and uh, talk to him. And he's probably going to watch the video and then just go ahead and write up the findings of fact, which we'll have for the next meeting. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so Joe, uh, as far as the process is concerned, you don't need to be at that next meeting, uh, although you're certainly welcome to, you know, to zoom in to, you know, to hear it. Uh, then once those findings have been uh, printed off here at the town hall, the planning board will come in, they'll sign those findings. Once we have everybody sign them, then uh, we'll be in touch with you as far as getting a copy of those uh, recorded at the registry. Okay, appreciate it. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right, then. Our next and final uh, application on the agenda is the 210501 Bow Spirit Kenny Bunk Court final subdivision application. And this is an initial review of that application. And uh, is Mr. Walsh here? Is he going ahead and can we bring him forward? And, and the owner, um, Ms. Ms. Gold, Golden Farm. Yes. Good. Thank you. Yeah, if you could get Michael Borowski as well, that would be great. He's there. Uh, he's, just... he's not joining. He's at a our daughter's school orientation. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Well, okay. everybody. It was nicer seeing everybody in person, I'll have to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying this is nicer. Well, I don't know. I kind of like seeing everybody. I like being in there. I know. Very good. It, it was good to get back to the normality of stuff, at least for one meeting. Yeah, I agree. Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I, so. I mean, uh, tell me what you'd like us to do. I mean, we can, I can give you the whole spiel, or do you want me to just deal with items that we've addressed since, uh, since we've seen you? Okay, well, I'll make a couple of comments. Um, one that we had uh, Ed had put together an approval letter okay. and we we noted that you had met all the requirements of that letter that we had put on there and you had provided a final uh, subdivision application for us yes um, and I'm going to ask you to discuss that a little bit I wanted to mention to the other planning board members as well that while Tom is not here in person, he certainly is in spirit because he left me a list of questions to ask, <laughs> to ask you. And so I'll be going forward with those as well as my own. Okay. But one, one I want to ask right away, and that's of Ed. Um, Ed, you're the case manager for this, but because you have your hands full with Ocean Woods, uh, would you like to forego this application? Can you still handle it or can we give it to somebody else? 
Um, Tom, Tom approached me with that, and I, I told him I was uh, at, at his uh, at his discretion. I certainly was open to handing this off. I I don't see any new issues raised, but I do think there's an effort to to do the write up, um, assuming this is approved. And uh, so I'd I'd be happy to have someone else uh, take over at this point and would offer any help in transitioning it. Okay, well, Tom already designated somebody if they're willing to take it. Oh, <laughs> so, you, go. <laughs> you right. know how thorough he is. Anyway, uh, John? I'm up for it. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I'll let you confer with Ed if you need to, to bring you up to speed and everything on what's gone on before. Uh, but I'll assume that you're at this point, you're the case manager. Okay. All right, so. Mr. Walsh, if you would go ahead and give a description of the final plan, sure. we would appreciate it. Sure. Let me uh, share my screen. Go here. Um, as of, as the, the property itself, just to orient everybody once again, as uh, the main street or Route 9 comes down here, we have um, Wild Sister Road that's on, on the other side. and. This little corner piece is owned by the Cambridge Park Conservation Trust. Um, it's a 3.4 acre parcel and has this existing um, home on it with a detached garage. Um, you most of that, you I think saw this on the site walk. It's it's somewhat vegetated um, in places. There's a tree line here that that runs through it. This is mostly um, wooded up in through here with this area around the house as being open. There is a um, ledge kind of throughout the site that we're, we're wrestling with, I guess, from a utility standpoint. Um, and the property is located in Cape Corpus West Zone. Uh, the, the plan that is being proposed is, sorry, I'm skipping around a little bit. That's the one I wanted. Um, the plan proposed are four lots. Um, one, two, three, and four. Actually, it's I guess it's five technically with an open space lot here. And as you can see, each of these lots does touch that open space, so it gives everybody kind of access to it. We have um, driveways, uh, three driveways for the four lots. So we've got one here off of Route Nine, and we've got two off of uh, Wilds District Road. This one's combined, and the reason for that really is for sight distances um, to be able to see in both directions here. Um, the utilities that we have proposed, I'll skip back to this plan, zoom in just a tad. You can see this. Uh, utilities really are, are pretty much individual services for each lot, just how they get there. Um, is, is a little different. We've got a water main on Route 9 that we're connecting in Lot 3, Lot 2, and Lot 4. We'll all come off of that water main. Um, and we have provided easements for, for that for Lot 2. And um, obviously Lot 3 connects directly. Lot 1 will use its existing services, so it has water and sewer um, services that exist for, for this lot here. Um, I think... We have, we've provided the ability to serve letters. I think all the information for both sewer and water in our, in our application. Um, I think those have all been taken care of and everybody's satisfied with those from the utility perspective. Um, we have had, we had some questions at the last one. Uh, the board asked about the LLC and we produced an agreement uh, for, the, for the LLC itself. Um, we do have um, HOA documents that were provided um, with our application also. Uh, there was a question um, I think Larry asked sort of about the proximity to the water tank and we did get um, correspondence back from, from the KKNW and they did not have any issue with us being in the proximity of the, of the water tank. Obviously, okay. if, we're, if we're blasting, we have to uh, notify them. Um, Anybody within 500 feet would get notified, so they would be one of them. But um, short of that, they were good. Um, and uh, we did, we are asking. I think the last thing is we are asking for a waiver. We talked about this last time from Article 12, the Street Design Standards. 
<clears throat> for the width of this, we'll call it a, an easement or right of way up through here to get to lot one uh, from 50 feet, from 50 feet down to 20 feet. And because it is just a driveway and the driveway width from 18 feet down to 14 feet. So I think that's our only real significant um, change there. We did have conversations with um, Mike Claus about the road and the sidewalk out here. And what Mike asked us to do is to put in a paved four foot shoulder along this edge of Wilds District Road in lieu of the, the sidewalk. Um, you probably all know this, but the, uh, he's got plans to rebuild um, Wilds District Road. And he felt that was a good, a good place for him if we did that, did that four foot wide shoulder that gave him the base gravel to, to build a sidewalk on when, uh, when they go forward with that reconstruction. So I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty much it. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. Okay, well, I'm going to start with some of Tom's questions here. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I think Warner needs to chime in on this. And he's asking, do we need to have ACORN look at the stormwater report, which is attachment six in your plan, and the cost estimates attachment eight? And I'll add my affirmation of having ACORN look at the stormwater report because I look at the drainage and I, I remember the elevations in there and just for safety's sake, um, you know, and flood sake, um, I think I'd like to see ACORN chime in on, on your stormwater report. I, yeah, I, know you, I know you said there wouldn't be very much in the terms of changes there. I, I looked at the report and it looked like the, the water would stay about the same. But the other question I had on that was on your map D2.0. Um, yes, the stormwater plan. Yeah, the storm, well, the post development drainage plan. Yep. You have this little tree line surrounding the area where all the houses, well, not all, not uh, the first lot, but the uh, lots two, three, and four are, uh, are you planning to put trees in there? Um, no, I guess I'm trying to, give me one second just to try to find that the, the, this would be sort of the clearing, the, the you know, a, a, an approximate clearing area. Oh, that's, what, okay. that's what those represent. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's the cleared area. Yeah. So there's much more clearing than there is right now on the whole lot, the whole piece of property. And that's, that's why I'm wondering with the elevation, would there be more stormwater runoff? Why I think ACORN might want to take a look at this. Yeah, I mean, I think our, our thoughts were that um, what we what we typically do on these, and, and we did this right here, we have a we have a place where we brought stormwater down here. We've got a culvert and a little level spreader here that will help convey whatever channelized flow is coming down this way into a level mm -hmm. spreader. Um, this will be pretty much sheet flow that continues down here and we'll kick this, we'll grade this driveway off so that it, it goes into this uh, wooded area before it gets down there. Um, obviously this lot, lot one is pretty much the same. There's no real change to that, um, might right. be a little bit, but the little the drainage that sort of gets channelized here, probably a little bit better, like I said, would be kicked off there. So um, it's pretty in, in the world of um, stormwater, it's relatively minor changes, I guess. In, in building houses as opposed to building roads and things like that, that tend to channelize water a lot more. All right. So Warner, I think your opinion is is requested here. Yeah, um, so, you know, we're certainly happy to forward this on to Acorn, you know, to ask for the, you know, their uh, review. Um, I, you know, I guess, you know, one of the first thought that come, you know, that comes to mind is that, you know, one of the things we're looking at here is we're looking at um, current elevations and current grades that are there. Uh, you know, I anticipate, 
you know, because of just the nature of the site, you're going to have, you know, a fair amount of blasting that's going to happen, you know, in some of those areas. So the topo is going to change. Uh, I mean, it's obviously something that we don't know what it's, you know, we don't know what that's going to look like right now. Um, you know, but some of that, you know, I do think some of that topo is probably going to change a little bit. So, um, again, happy to send it on to Acorn to get their thoughts on it. Um, but, you know, I do think there's going to be, you know, I don't think, you're, you know, the topo is going to be quite as severe as what you're looking at here, you know, just because, you know, you're going to have some, you know, leveled off building sites, uh, you know, as a result of, of this. But So you think there'll be, the drainage will stay on the uh, building sites more? Well, I, th I think it's going to be, I think it, you know, and, and Bill, you can weigh in on this, but I think it's going to be less, you know, it's going to be, you know, the, the topo, you know, in, in some fashions is going to be a little bit less severe because you're going to have, you know, you're going to have sites that are going to be, you know, for lack of a better term, flattened out, yeah. um, you know, some, and, and I would suspect, you know, the stormwater model that you're working with, you, you're, you know, you're working off of the topo that you have, not necessarily what the topo that's exactly, you know, what the topo is going to be. Yeah, exactly. And I think the, the thing that I always find important with these sort of individual lot developments is it's more important that we get the runoff back into a sheet flow form and not into a concentrated form. You know, <clears throat> we're going to have this so that, you know, one of the reasons for this was that we didn't have water running down and, and running down the road where we're kicking it off into the into the vegetated areas in all of these spaces so that it's more just sheet flow off of here, which, you know, that that's the real problem comes when there's concentrated flows. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the only, you know, the, the uh, you know, the practical question that I have with this is, is making sure that, you know, that th this gets done by the developer as opposed to leaving that up to say an individual you know, homeowner, you know, um, you know, you get a homeowner that buys a lot, you know, whenever you have some of those, um, you know, specifics, we want to make sure at least that the specifics are, are taken care of, you know, sure. when lots get developed. So, yeah, I mean, I don't mind it being a condition that we end up, you know, having to sheet these off into vegetated areas, either directly or like we did here with a little level spreader. Um, yeah. I think that's the, that's the critical part here. So, not, so, not real hard to achieve, I don't think, on this site. So would you con include it in the homeowners association? Uh, I'm sure yeah, we could yeah, we can certainly do that. That that driveways need to sheet flow into vegetated spaces. And if they can't, we would or if we concentrate anywhere, we need to kick it off into a level spreader. Okay. All right. And I'm not sure what Tom meant by cost estimates in attachment eight, but um, do we need to have anyone look at that, Warner? Uh, so you want to pull those up, Bill, so we can. Yeah. Uh... I mean, cost estimates on a project like this are are a little bit tricky because we're talking about you know elements that are uh, re you know required improvements for a subdivision and typically speaking we, you know when we're when we're dealing with a you know with a with a larger scale subdivision we've got a lot of road work you know that's going on here and we we really don't have that here you know this is all individual lot development and so the majority of the costs that we're looking at you know i think are, are related to you know the work that's going to happen in the right of way uh, you know, in order to deal with, you know, some of the site distance piece pieces. Exactly. I'm just, sorry, I'm just searching for that one. Um, don't get dizzy. There we go. I think that must have been the one he was talking about. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we did do these as just, you can see these unit costs and what we put in here, um, fairly typical of, of what we do. And we actually did the quantities and came up with the, came up with the final cost for that $114,000 um, one. I think, you know, sanitary service is probably the bigger one, the largest one there. Yeah. Actually, actually, Ledger Move was probably the biggest one right there. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And just a note on this, we're actually in the market trying to get cost estimates right now, as I'm sure you, you all know, the the building is crazy and, and we're just trying to get someone to return a phone call. So we will have updated estimates before we start the work. Um, yeah, and just so, you know, everybody remembers, uh, we, whenever we, you know, before you know, before we give kind of the, you know, the green light, you know, to start doing actual work, you know, we always ask for actual, uh, actual uh, contract numbers, you know, for the improvements as opposed to, you know, the estimates, you know, that have been done um, just to deal with that, that type of situation, you know, cause as, as, you know, as good as Bill can estimate what it's going to cost, you know, the reality of it is, is that, you know, the markets, you know, the market out there is really going to dictate, you know, what, um, you know, what the costs are going to be. Um, and so we'll, we'll wind up taking, you know, an actual, um, you know, contract number, you know, match it up, make sure it matches up with what, you know, with what Bill has provided here. And then we also have an additional 25% that's added onto that as a contingency, you know, that we make sure is in place. Yep. So we're pretty much covered then. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a, you know, again, I think this is a good, you know, this is a good number to work with. And I mean, Bill can talk a little bit about, you know, if he's, you know, if he's throwing in any contingency relative to what we've seen for cost increases over the past you know, two years. Um, yeah, we've put a little bit in there. And I can tell you it's so it's pretty wacky out there right now. So it's it's hard to say um, what it is. I I hesitate other than something like this. You know, when clients ask me, I tend to hesitate on costs and ask them to talk to contractors. But um, you know, I think this represents a realistic um, one of you know within the last year. It's a realistic price, but they they have been changing. And as Werner said, we can we can work with them once we get the actual realistic uh, numbers brought in. Yeah, yeah. The big thing that you're not seeing here is just you know is road construction. You know, you don't have a road. You know, you're not building a road here. Exactly. Um, you know, and that's you know that's that's a pretty big you know that's a pretty big driver. You know, you don't have you know you don't have a lot of extensive uh, stormwater infrastructure here. Um, you know, it's not like you're, you know, you're not building a, you know, retention or a detention, you know, pond, you know, thing, you know, things like that. Sort of house lot type utilities basically is what we're building. Okay. All right. I think that answers that. Um, um, I'll let Tom bring up the stormwater report again, if he wants it, if anybody else is interested in having ACORN look at that. I think um, it'd be useful to have ACORN look at it, yeah. 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 In fact, in fact, if we're still talking about the storm water uh, report, I, I was, don't, don't you have to consider, well, I saw where it was done for two year, 10 year and 25 year, but don't you have to consider a 50 year storm um, as well? Uh, I don't know where to run. I'm not yeah. sure off the top of my head. Which I don't think we is. have that in the subregs, but let me, let me double check that. We can certainly run that. That's not a huge deal. Because I think we had that in one of the other recent subdivisions, 50 year storm. Possible they went to excess. Well, I mean, what I noticed is there's no change essentially, but still, it'd be nice to I think see what the impact is. Yeah. Uh, so in the uh, so in your sub in the subdivision regs, it's two year, ten year, and twenty five year. Okay. All, All right. right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. But it, it sounds like it would be a good idea to have Acorn just check over that stormwater report. Yep, I think so. With the plans for the uh, for the house lot, yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, one of the other issues that Tom brings up is that the uh, 
KKW the letter is from May and um, the nearest fire hydrant is apparently something like six miles away on Cat Mousem Road and uh, might be more than the fire chief wants. So well, I think he, I want those. <laughs> <laughs> gonna pull the hose from my house <laughs> right yeah. 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 you get right. to hook it up <laughs> right. actually I do have one right across the street from me <laughs> um, really nice it comes off I'm sorry that comes off KKW I gotta, I gotta read that one it must have been their letter that they yeah we do have a hydrant um we do have hydrants right close by on this well, it might be a good idea to have them generate a new letter that reflects that, that yeah. it's closer by. Yep, yeah. I don't, they must have cut and paste from something else. Yeah, uh -huh. so I think, you know, a, a new letter from KKWD would be a good idea. Okay. All right, and then um, also the Jamie Pasco letter. Yep, yeah, that is the KKW. Uh, uh, more than that, he said he's asking why a two inch instead of a one inch line. Yeah, we did change those to one inch. You did change it to one inch. We did. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then Warner, you could chime in on this. Um, I didn't see any more, but he asked whether there are any more Section Eight. 1C permits that are needed, for example, the MDEP, other than the MDOT driveway entrance permit? No, no. So, I mean, we don't need anything from DEP on this one. Uh, hard to believe, you know, pretty much yeah. else has a DEP permit. Um, and, you know, we'll have, we have the entrance permit from MDOT uh, up you know, on the Route 9 side, and that's fine. And then the Wilds District Road ones are local jurisdiction. And so, you know, and I think we've talked about how, um, you know, those entrance permits will be contingent upon uh, making the actual site distance once the ledge removal has been done. Yes. Okay. All right. And then he asked about attachment. 10 is there an erosion and sedimentation plan and I, i've seen one through through this um on the plans you seem yes. to have one yes we um, do have that on the plans um scrolling through here I know we do show it on the plans. Um, yeah. On our, it's on our final plan set. Um, I assume that's what he's asking about it, the erosion controls on the plans themselves. Yeah, uh, I think so. There's no separate erosion and sedimentation plan. Well, there is something in the stormwater. Um, yeah, the, this, plan. this plan, this plan is a ENS plan, uh, C2.2. Okay. So that has our erosion control notes on it and it shows our, our measures that we're using. Okay. Yeah, I think what what Tom is thinking of, I think he's he's used to seeing kind of that typical sheet that has the exam, you know, that's got the examples of what the ENS measures are. Right. But okay. And he asked about, are there driveway entrance permits for Wiles District Road, or are they going to be dealt with later on? Um, I think that's what I think that was what Werner just intimated. Yeah. There, there, there. We did get something back from um, Mike Claus and the fire department or the police department. They went out here and looked at them and said, "Yes, we'll." Well, they said they'll approve it when the work after the work's done is when it actually gets approved by them. So you don't need an actual permit before you start. Uh, correct. They want to. They want it 
essentially they want us to clear the ledge and the site distances so that they can actually view it and see it um, in person. Okay. All right. Well, that and all the other information you gave, you answered all of my questions. Is okay. there anybody else who wants to chime in and ask? May, may I have a question or two? Sure, okay. go ahead. Yeah, um, Bill, looking at the, um, the homeowners association bylaws that's in here, and it's, it's making reference to uh, administering the common areas and enforcing the terms and conditions of the declaration of restrictive covenants in the Bowsprit subdivision. Do, do we have a copy of that, the restrictive covenants? Yes. I Pretty sure you do. There. Um, I was just looking, was looking for it. Uh, let's see. That's what. I think that's what this stuff is right here. Um, that's the LLC. Sorry. It is right. There's the. Um, that's what I'm reading. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and just above that. Okay. This is oh, this right here, the Declaration of Restrictive Covenants. Yeah, let me just uh, flip back to that. And those were taken from the last, the public hearing, what we understood yes. to be the planning boards. I, I just didn't, I didn't see it. And, yeah. Uh, th thank you. So, so without me just trying to read this in real time, just re remind me, the, the common area, yep. that lot is going to be deeded first, of course, to the developer, but then eventually to the HOA. Correct. Right? Correct. And what are the restrictions going to be on the use of that? Like no motorized vehicles or do you, do you have anything like that thought, thought about or? Um, I don't know that we do have that, Abby. Do you know if we have that in here? I, I'm, not, I I'm not saying you need to. I'm just yeah. no. I, I don't you have in think, mind. I don't think we intended for it to be motorized vehicles. I think it was more plantings and kind of passive open space. Uh, understood. I'm just I'm, I'm I live I live in an eight lot subdivision. Okay, so I have that, that's my uh, that's my frame of reference here, and we have some restrictions. One of which yep. is I can't I can't go snowmobiling on it or whatever. I can go cross country skiing. So yep. if that's not in there, you, you might think about it. I don't really have a vested interest in it. I was just asking okay. for my own uh, edification, I guess. Yep. And so the, the cross hatch areas on the site distance plan, those yep. are not on the deed that is going to be held by the HOA though, correct? Those are going to be on the deeds of Lots one, two, three, four. Correct. Okay. So you basically put a put a restriction on those areas, an easement, if you will, that the HOA has. Yes. And and they can go in there and cut cut down a, a any, any planting that grow up exactly. Okay. All right. yep. so, so so that works. Yep. Um The last thing I have is on the the shared driveway. Yep. If if you could bring that up, um, yep. that's on lot two, I think. Okay. So so lots one and two share that driveway, which comes off of Wiles District. Yep. Is there something you want to put in the covenant about the, the or maybe it's in there in those restrictions, if I'd only read them. <laughs> it says that the uh, the HOA has the right to plow that if the lot owners don't plow it, or that they have the responsibility to collect funds to have that plowed. I'm thinking that the first part of that is clearly both lots have a vested interest in. Right. And, and I'm thinking of a time when perhaps you know, the current applicant doesn't own lot one. Right. Maybe maybe that's, you know, not germane at the moment. But if you look at that second section, though, the person in lot two, he doesn't care whether or not that gets plowed. 
And the person in lot one, well, he has to go on the lot two property in order to plow it. It's not his driveway. So, so do, you, do you envision any language maybe in the restrictive covenants that, that address that? Um, I mean, we can talk to uh, we can talk to the attorney about that. I think it's between these two lots, right? So, lot one has to have this easement and ability to plow over that. Lot two right. obvious, obviously has the ability to get in there and do it because it's on his own lot. So, so again, you know, from my from my point of view, I don't think my approval or not hinges on this, but really just an observation that maybe yeah. there is that right needs to be called out. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it would be called out on the lot two deed. I guess it would be called out lot one and lot two deed where those yeah, yeah. that easement would be called out. But it's a shared responsibility and absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you you'd have a road maintenance agreement you know, between lots one and two right? for that piece. And my understanding, most banks nowadays, if there's any type of shared access easement, want to see a maintenance agreement in place, um, you know, before financing gets, you know, approved for, for properties when there's a yeah. shared access. Right. I just, you want to lay the groundwork for that now, though, at the time the lots are put in place. So, yep. absolutely. Thank you. That's all I had. Okay. Hi, Larry. No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. John. I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Scott. Yeah. Just, just wondering it's, uh, it's on lot one and two, and this is to bill. Um, so lot, lot two is the owner. Of, of that driveway from, you know, his garage door down to the street. Is that accurate? This one, yeah, lot two would own, yeah, exactly. They own. So, it's, so it's it's obviously a lot one that's getting the easement. Yes. Okay, where was the variance requested for the 14 feet? So it's for this section of, of, of driveway right up through here. So the the that's it right there. The regulations call for a 50 foot wide right of way and a 20 foot wide road. And we've done a 20 foot wide right of way and a 14 foot wide driveway. Okay. And the fire department's okay with that? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Is the reason that so much of the drive for lot one goes over lot two that it's already in place, basically? Um, it's actually um, for grade, to be honest with you. It's for, for being able to get a driveway that's not too steep um, uh -huh. so, so that emergency vehicles can traverse it so that it's not a, it's not a problem. So that as we curl it up, if you will, we make it a little bit longer and making it longer decreases the grade of it. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? If not, um, can we have a motion to deem this application um, complete except for a stormwater report from ACORN? Were there other? So, so, so moved. Okay. I have I'll a second, second it. I'll second it. Okay. Well, I'm in favor. Um, Ed? Yes, in favor. Okay. Larry? In favor. Scott? In favor. Okay. John? In favor. All right. Um, do we have do we have a case manager for this? Yes. It's John. Oh, that's John. right. It's John. Okay. <laughs> I'll go back to the beginning here. Okay. All right. Then with that complete, then we'll schedule a public hearing and hopefully have a stormwater report maybe before that, before the next meeting. Okay. So you do, you do public hearings both for pre and for preliminary and final? Yes. They have the, okay. Yeah. The planning board has the option. 
you know, in that, uh, in that regard to do public hearings for both. Yeah. And if we're going to have a final report with final drawings, I think you need to allow the public to chime in on those okay. and give opinions. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, when would that be scheduled? Uh, before, well, what it's, when is the next planning board meeting? It's two weeks from now. Yeah, we would, uh, let me just pull up the calendar here. We'd go ahead and schedule that one for the next meeting, which I believe that's the 15th. 15th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. And All right. Warner, Warner, you'll contact ACORN? Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'll touch base. I'll touch base with Bill. We'll make sure we get everything, you know, that everything gets sent over to them promptly. Yeah, we'll try to get that over tomorrow. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Well, with that, it concludes our business and I'll take another, you know, for the planning board for tonight and I'll take another motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor, just say aye. 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 Okay. I'll Thank see you. you in two weeks. All right. Good. Thank you. Good job. Thanks, Debbie. Yep. Thanks. Bye. Bye.